Once again, welcome back with the Celebrity Club with uh, Dr. Joshua Yoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we have our very special guest, Apostle Brooks, Brooks Crawford. And she was just sharing with us a little bit about her ministry, how God called her into the ministry, and what are the miracles that she has experienced, and how God miraculously confirmed the calling for her to become an evangelist and later on with the apostle to become the apostle and learn from wonderful men and women of God. And uh, let us put our hand together and welcome Apostle Brooke Crawford. Yay! <laughs> Amen. Once again, welcome. And uh, uh, thank you so much for sharing with us about your story. And uh, this celebrity club is the place that where we want to hear the story of people of highly accomplished in different fields, whether it's in church or in uh, entertainment industry or whatever, in science or education. So we'd like to invite you to come and join us and, and share about your story so that more people know about you, know about your story, and may your story can be a great challenge and encouragement to many other people. Yes. So uh, we just stop, uh, stop, uh, stop where you were talk, talking about the confirmation of the ministry, and uh, then you're talking about the great man of God from South Africa. Would you please just share a little bit more about his ministry and what, how, how is the relationship uh, and the connection that you have? together with that ministry yes well uh, remember I told you the elder had called me and said that I was supposed to meet this apostle that's coming to America from Africa and I said are you sure that God called my name out he says yes he said I said well I will pray and ask God did he tell you that I'm supposed to meet this apostle because I don't understand why I need to meet this apostle. And so anyway, this was after that I had received this telephone call. Mm. And so at that time, uh, I said, okay, I will pray tonight and I will ask the Lord, did he tell you to tell me that? I said, because it was funny to me because I couldn't believe it. I thinking, well, why God would you want me to meet an apostle? And so... Very soon after that, and I prayed that night, and I said, Lord, did you tell the elder to tell me this, that I am supposed to meet this man? And he said, yes. That's all he said, yes. And I said, okay. So the elder calls me back, maybe about four or five days later, he said, oh, the apostle will be here in two weeks. And... The Lord told me to have the apostle send you his resume. Mm. And so I'm shocked again. I'm astounded. And so I'm saying to the Lord, Lord, why do I need his resume? What am I supposed to do with that? Mm. You know, I'm not even a minister. What do I need with his resume? <laughs> Praise God. And so, of course, uh, he called me as soon as he arrived here in America. While he was on the East Coast, he was in the state of uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Maryland, Baltimore, uh, Virginia. He went to several different states. And what the apostle was doing, he was setting up churches in these various locations where he was going. And so he said he, his last stop will be California, and that's when he will come out to meet you. And I said, wow, to meet me? He goes, yes, he's coming out to meet you. The apostle did send me his resume. <laughs> I read it. I'm like, okay, Lord. So I got the resume. I read it. I did what you told me to. I'm praying again, and I'm preparing, you know, for um, the Bible studies. And at this time, the Lord had me starting the Bible studies. I prayed for some property some a larger property so that I could have a place, a sanctuary, where I could really spend time drawing closer to the Lord and getting to know the Lord. And so God in all of his faithfulness and 
I asked him, I said, Lord, why are you so faithful? You answer every prayer I pray. And he once again told me what he had told me many years before that. He said, that's none of your business. And I said, okay. And then finally, I got back to asking him that again after about two years. Finally, this time, he gave me the answer. And it was Psalms 116, verses 1, 2, 3. So I'll let you read that on your own, of what he said to me. But God is faithful when you trust him and you put your confidence in him. Whatever you ask him, whatever you seek after him for, he will do it because he has a greater desire for you to be in the will of God for your life than you have. And so when he is so happy and he is so thrilled, when you go to him and say, Lord, I need to find out who I am and what am I supposed to be doing for you? It doesn't matter what it is or what area of life it may take. But if it's God's will, you're going to be fulfilled. You're going to be happy. You're going to be able to endure the trials and the tests that are going to come that's going to try your faith. And everything that he does, he does it through the faith that he puts in us. Amen. And that's why he gives us his Holy Spirit. So that we will be able to accomplish that which the seed he's already put in us. Even from our birth. Who we are to be on the earth. Amen. And Hallelujah. as the result uh, out of that Bible study. You and ha your husband start a church. From that one, and you have been pastoring for many years with yes. that church. Yes. Can you just tell a little bit about that church in very short, and before we move on with the ministry with Dr. Maurice Rulo? Well, this is what happened. Uh, when, I, when the apostle came out, and I met the apostle, and we met at a, a ministry, and so uh, he was there to minister and uh, preach the word, and so afterwards uh he invited me to go with him to dinner and everything and so i said okay fine this this is what we'll do and so um we did we got to know each other a little bit better and so as the ministry uh he came he spoke there and uh, because the, god answered my prayer concerning the property he gave me this property and there was an extra building on the property, and that was the sanctuary. So that's how oh. the ministry started there on that property. That that uh, he opened a miracle door for me to get that property as well. Amen. So as we are, oh, yes. time is uh, running. So oh, okay. let, let, let's uh, talk yeah, let's very quickly of fast. what are the achievements so, that you uh, have been yes. seeing in the ministry. What are the things that God have using you, and what are the achievements that you have seen so that the people we know uh, about more about you and your ministry. So the uh, the ministry began to grow and. Uh, the, God started sending the people because I kept asking him, where are the people going to come from? And he says, I want you to start telling people more, you know, that you have these Bible studies. So my ministry is unique in the fact that it teaches the Word of God. We operate in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the power of God is amazing uh, in, in this ministry that he gave me to store over because it's his ministry. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to him. And so I said, Lord, I said, well, you know, how he said, you are called to teach my people who they really are. I said, well, they, they know this already. He said, no, I'm giving you a unique calling for you to teach them who they are. Mm -hmm. And so I said, how am I going to do that? I don't even know who I am. <laughs> and so once again, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I will teach you everything you need to know. In this process of him teaching me, he began to open up doors for me to start traveling. So the apostle uh, invited me to come to South Africa. Mm. And so he said, we're having a revival. It's going to be uh, all over the country. It's a major revival that we're doing in South Africa and he said uh, pastor I want you to come uh, for this revival I said okay 
because I'm ministering in prayer now. I'm a prayer minister, and so God gave me the title of my ministry, Intercessory Covenant Prayer Ministry. Mm. And so I said, okay. And so um, he said, well, we need to start preparing now. I said, that's fine with me. I'm thinking I'm just going there to minister in prayer and to oversee in prayer the conference and this revival that was going to be taking place in South Africa. Now, secretly in my heart, I always had a desire to go to South Africa because I identified with the struggle of apartheid. And so I said, wow, God, this will be awesome. I'm praying for these people in this foreign country. That's when the Lord revealed to me, I have called you to the international ministry. And so I said, okay, fine. So this was Apostle Masala. And so a year later, uh, they had the revival, and uh, I had prepared myself to go. My husband is saying, okay, honey, uh, I just knew he was just going to freak out because I was going, you know, without him, and he was uh, in business, so, of course, he could not travel with me at that time. And so uh, what happened was I ended up going to South Africa for the revival, I was there for almost a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for one month. The revival went on for over three weeks. Mm. And uh, that's, and I had no idea that I was going to get ordained or any of that. God just kept telling me, stay in my word, keep praying, ministering to the people that I send to you, to your ministry, and, and prepare for this trip to South Africa. And so I said, okay, Lord, uh, am I going by myself? Who shall I take with me? Or, and he said, take your daughter. She will be your covering. And I said, okay. So I did. I took my daughter and my granddaughter with, with me. And uh, we get to South Africa. The apostle and his wife, they picked us up from the airport. I felt the power of God. I felt a supernatural divine connection between the United States and South Africa. Amen. Amen. We have only five minutes right now. Okay. So after your trip from Africa, and then uh, I know that you also have sharing about that you have the ministry with uh, prophetess uh, Michelle Cora and Dr. Maurice Cerullo, and the audience would like to know a little bit on what, how you serve together with this ministry in just a few minutes left. Okay, well, let me get to that. What happened in South Africa, he told me when he picked me up that afternoon, he said, oh, uh, prophet, you're supposed to preach tonight. I said, what? I don't know how to do that. He goes, I said, no, you're, you're joking. I just started laughing, you know. And he said, no, I'm serious. The Lord said you're supposed to preach. I said, at the revival? He goes, yes, you're supposed to preach at the revival. I'm shaking. Now I'm crying because I'm feeling the anointing, the power of God. It came over me so strong. He was not joking. It was for real. So I said, Lord, you must, you must help me with this. The power of God, as soon as I stepped on the platform, after he introduced me, the power of God hit me so strongly, and I began to preach. And the Holy Spirit said, that's why I've been teaching you to teach the people who they are. And immediately, the scripture opened up, Isaiah 61. That the Lord said, I have sent you here to preach the gospel to the poor and for the for them to be healed and the brokenhearted to be healed and delivered and the blind to see. And that's when the miracles began to happen in my ministry. Now, I wasn't even ordained. Mm -hmm. I was still just doing the Bible studies in America. And that whole entire two and a half weeks, I preached every day. Three messages every day. The Holy Spirit, the anointing of God, gave me the strength. And that's when I first got my first preaching experience in a, in a foreign country. And I got ordained on the third day that I was there. 
the day I preached my first sermon in South Africa was the day my husband's birthday. So the Lord put it on a day that he knew I would never forget. Mm. And so the ministry began to grow and take off from there. When I got back to America and other ministers were calling me to come and preach in their nations. And so God just began to open doors Amen. for me. Meanwhile, I started going to... Um, a friend of mine invited me to Papa Cirillo's uh, mm -hmm. conference. And so I said, well, who is this man? I never even heard of him. She says, oh, you really enjoy it. Just come and go with me. Mm -hmm. So I did, and I went to that conference, and I felt a good... Um, I said, wow, this man of God is so anointed. And I literally could... The Lord would just show me the anointing that he carried on his shoulders. And I said, wow, Lord. And so I said, who is this man? And so the father, he didn't say anything to me at first. Because I asked a lot of questions to the Lord. <laughs> and long story short, God revealed to me and he revealed to Papa that I was one of his spiritual daughters. Because, see, I never had a spiritual father mm. on the earth. So I, I kept asking the Lord, Lord, where is my spiritual father in the earth? Mm. Other people, they have a spiritual father. I said, but I, you're my father, yes, but I don't have anyone on the earth that's my spiritual father. Mm. I said, can I have a spiritual father? And after 40 some years, I met my spiritual father, which was Papa Cirillo. Amen. Amen. And so he sent me a letter. After I went to that very first conference of his, which was in 2003 or 2004, one of those, and the Lord sent me, I mean, Papa Cirillo sent me a letter. And he said, the Lord told me that you're my spiritual daughter. Amen. And there was confirmation again, because when I picked that letter up, and he sent it to my home, that letter is the most beautiful letter I'd ever seen, the cover on the outside and everything. And it, and I said, what? And I started crying and shaking. And that was my first connection with Papa Cirillo. Amen. Praise okay, uh, we are talking about Dr. Maurice Cirillo another time. But in a nutshell, what are the things that you learn from the ministry of Dr. Maurice Cerullo? Yes. One of the main things that I learned being under the ministry of Papa Cerullo and being a, um, uh, uh, a chairman of the board of elders in, in this ministry is the faithfulness, how important faithfulness is and the timing of the Holy Spirit and listening to the Holy Spirit let the Holy Spirit guide you and stay in faith toward that walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and Papa taught us that when you put your trust and your confidence and your faith in the Father that he will direct your path he will instruct you the way that you should go. And so as he traveled to the different nations, uh, on many of those occasions, I was able to go with him in the international, uh, uh, the international nations. And so that in itself right there was one of the, the primary things I learned. And then God began to connect me to Dr. Michelle Correll mm. because I had a greater desire to learn more about the Torah mm. and the, the Hebrew language. And so I prayed and prayed and I said, Lord, who can I go to to learn more specifically about your word, about the Torah, about the word of God, the Torah? And uh, I had such a hunger and desire and so God supernaturally gave me a vision of Dr. Carell and he said this is the church where you can go and learn this mm. and he literally woke me up one Sunday morning and he said do not go to your church he said I want you to go to Dr. Carell 
I said, well, I don't even know where her ministry is. Yeah. I don't know where to go. So the Holy Spirit literally directed me where to go. Amen. Now, we and talk that's... another time, and I know that you also written a book, so would you please tell to the, the, the viewers over there about your books that we are closing for tonight? Yes. Well, the Lord put in my spirit, in a, and uh, when I had gone on a cruise with uh, a ministry called Agape Ministry, and... When we were on this cruise, I met several people who were in ministry in different aspects of the body of Christ. And so we were talking on the phone one day, and we were talking about how God has moved and done miraculous things in our lives. And during that course of the conversation, my friend says to me, Wow, evangelist. I said, What? She said, the Lord's going to have you write a book. Mm. I said, really? She said, yes. Mm. And when I said, okay. And she said, yeah, and you're, you're going to write this book for the Lord. She says, and I don't know what it's about, but you're going to write a book. And soon as she said, I don't know what it's about, the Lord said, the name of your book is the Book of Elders. So what do you mean by that, the book of the elders? The, that's what I said to the Lord too. <laughs> I said, Lord, what do you mean by the book of elders? He said, that's the title of your book, the book of elders. I said, what elders? Who are you talking about? He said, the elders in my word. I said, wow. He says, yes. He said, I will teach you what you're going to put in this book. And so he had me get a journal. I didn't know I was going to end up getting many journals. And he says, I want you to start studying the elders in my word. And I said, wow, well, I don't even know what elders are. What do they do? You know? And so long story short, I studied seven years about elders in oh, the word of God. Wonderful. And then would you please just name some of the 12 elders that you mentioned in the book so that the people, well, you want to get to know more about this book and about the elders and what are the lessons. Now, so would you please just share a little bit. Oh, wow. I don't even know how to start with that. Yeah. But just the name. This, well, some of the elders in the Bible? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Well, we have Aaron. He was Moses' Of course, we all know his brother. And so Moses, when the Israelites uh, were coming out of Egypt, and the Lord called Moses, of course, to be their deliverer to bring them out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so the major example that the Lord gave me, he said, I want to make sure that you put this in your book. I said, no, this is not my book. This is your book. So you have to write this book. <laughs> So the Lord said to me, he said, remember in, in Exodus where I spoke to Moses and I said to him, I am going to have you anoint the ministers that are going to assist you in your ministry. And so the elders, the first elders were those that Moses he said, the same spirit that's upon you, I'm going to release that same spirit upon them. Amen. So, so those that is the are first one first that you wrote about. And what is the second name of the elders that you wrote in your book? The, the first one is Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Aaron was the, the first. Second one is we, yes. And, and the, the, the elders that, uh, that uh, Moses anointed. Yeah. And, and what, the what spirit are the of prophecy of the came upon them. Okay. Yes. If you want to know more about the books, because of time, so if you know more about the books, so just keep in touch. And we are looking forward to see you next time with the Celebrity, Celebrity Club. And uh, once again, this is Reverend Dr. Joshua Yoon and Apostle Brooke Crawford. Let us give them, give her a big hand. And may the Lord will continue to bless you abundantly in your ministry. Thank you so Thank much. You.